Today, I'm going to show you how I create color styles in Sketch. Let's get started. So right now I'm opening up a sketch file that I've been working on. It's a voice recorder app design. And right now I have several different states in my application so far. I have a list state, a delete state, a review state, and an actual recording state. And as I'm designing this, I am inputting my own kind of color scheme to this application. But right now I've decided, well, I want to actually change the color scheme. And the only way I can do that currently is going to each individual artboard and making changes manually. But using sketch color styles, we'll be able to automatically change the color of the UI really, really quickly. So let's just say, for example, if I decided I want to change the background of every single one of these artboards, I would have to click each one and go through this process of making it light and then going to this one and then making it light. And it's just an overall very manual process. So I want to streamline this and create variables for my colors as I create them. So that way, if I ever decide to make changes later, I can do it holistically and very quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of make a color palette of the current colors I have in my UI. So I'm going to make these like little squares here and fill it with the color that's in my UI. So I'm just going to take that color so those are kind of like background and text colors. This is my accent color for my button, little line UI. And now when I get to these actual lines, how can I possibly grab that color that I'm currently using? Right now these audio lines are bars that I've created with a certain gradient effect. So if I actually click into it, I see that it's just a line with a border. And so this doesn't actually have a fill because there's no fill for a line, there's only a border. So when I want to grab that color, I actually need to flip from fill to border to just grab that color. But when I grab it, it only takes that color from that segment. So I could add this color gradient to my document gradients like this. And then I could click that border and then assign the, go to the gradient area and then assign it that way. I can make it a little bolder just so it's a bit more obvious as to what it looks like. So these are all the colors I'm currently using in my application and I'm going to want to modify them throughout my UI. So first I would create this color palette and then I'm going to assign names to them so that I know what they're referring to. So I'll probably take this and call it primary. This is the primary CTA in the application. This application is very CTA heavy. We want the user to complete the main action on the page and create recordings. So that's why I'm going to call it primary. And this one I'm going to grab and I'm going to call it audio lines. Just so I know that that one is definitely the style for the audio lines. Now, if I take this color and let's say if I change it and I click this refresh icon, nothing happens in the UI. Nothing happens because I didn't assign this pink to that primary color. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to assign that primary color to this button. So I'm going to grab that button style, change it to primary. And I'm going to go back. Where else does this color exist? Well, it also exists for these kind of buttons. I have this play button and this pause button. If I click on this icon right now, I just have it as a triangle and then a circle. So if I click on the triangle and I set it to primary, that works well. But if I click that circle and I click primary, it becomes filled. Why does that happen? It's because with color styles, you're assigning the type of style it is as you're creating it. So we're saying that this is a fill and not a border, that particular color style. And therefore, it fills the circle completely and makes that triangle not visible. We can create a workaround for this. So basically, because I want to keep that one primary style, I couldn't make a primary border and just make the circle the border style. But another way to do this is 
a little bit of a hacky way, but you could create an other circle on top of this. Have it match the background color so it looks as if it is transparent. And that way, this one is set to primary and that one's also set to primary. And I'm going to do the same thing for this pause button. So now I'm going to do the same thing with these audio lines. So I have this color style already created called audio lines. And now I will assign that color style to all of the lines. Okay, they look like they disappeared. Why did that happen? I believe that this happened because when I created that swatch, I created a rectangle object and created a border with it. And these are line objects. I feel like this disappeared because it doesn't identify with the correct object. So now I have the elements in the UI synced up to the shared styles I have created. Now I can easily go to this fill and change it. So I am selecting a different kind of color for my primary. I will refresh it and now it is applied throughout the entire UI. Now this isn't very accessible, so I will actually change the color a bit, make it a little bit deeper. So now I'm going to try to do the same thing with the lines. So I'm going to grab that audio line and modify the border colors and then click refresh. And now it is updated throughout the entire UI. So in this case, I can create a color palette where I can make a change once and then it can apply throughout my entire UI system. So I hope you enjoyed this video introducing you to color styles. Color styles can get pretty complicated if you involve nesting and other kind of elements, but this is a basic introduction into color styles. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.